This begins with the ground, not the surface we walk on, but the deep, silent energy beneath it. For decades, we've known there's clean, stable power waiting down there, but we couldn't reach it, at least not easily. In cities where space is tight and machines can't squeeze through, geothermal remains a dream. Until now, a drill the size of your arm may change all of that. And it moves like something out of science fiction, compact, autonomous, quiet, and very, very smart. So how does it work? And why does it matter more now than ever? Let's find out. The problem beneath our cities. It sounds simple on paper. The ground stays at a steady temperature year round. So why not tap into that for heating and cooling? That's the idea behind ground source heat pumps. They're more efficient than air-based systems, especially in cold or variable climates. But there's a catch. You have to drill deep, and deep drilling is expensive, noisy, and space-hungry. In cities, that's a deal-breaker. Backyards are tight. Access is limited. And most geothermal rigs are monsters. Imagine a semi-truck parked in your garden for days, tearing up soil just to reach the depth needed. It's not just disruptive. It's expensive. For most homeowners and small buildings, it's simply out of reach. This is where the problem lives, not in the heat pump technology itself, but in accessing the stable earth temperature just a few dozen meters down. Horizontal loops need too much surface area. Vertical ones need too much firepower. And so most buildings stick with gas or settle for less efficient air source systems. The clean energy is there. We just haven't had a good way to reach it until a strange little drill from Switzerland started doing the job from the inside out. A mole with a mission. The idea didn't come from a billion dollar lab. It started with a workshop. In 2015, Dr. Hans-Jörg Denig was attending a drilling technology session when a question began to form. What if the problem with geothermal wasn't the energy source, but the size of the machine? The more he thought about it, the more it made sense. If you can't bring the rig to the hole, why not put the drill inside the hole? Two years later, the concept took shape. A micro drill, compact enough to fit in urban spaces, but strong enough to bore deep into the earth. No diesel, no crane, no torn up lawn. Just a quiet, intelligent robot with a single job. Go down. They called it the Borobot. And like any underground explorer, it needed a nickname. Inspired by a cartoon mole, it became Grabowski, a name as odd and endearing as the machine itself. By 2023, Bohr Robotics spun out of the Zurich University of Applied Sciences. Funding followed quickly. Investors saw the potential. A drill that fits in a van, a setup that takes an afternoon, and a carbon footprint slashed by over 80%. The mole wasn't just digging, it was disrupting. Anatomy of the Borobot. At first glance, it doesn't look like much. Just a long, narrow cylinder. But inside that shell is one of the most ambitious geothermal systems ever built. The Borobot is just 13.5 centimeters wide and 2.8 meters long, about the size of a street lamp pole. But this tiny machine holds four critical systems, drilling, flushing, movement, and structural support. The drilling head is where the magic starts. It features a compact gearbox paired with two miniature motors. One drives rotation, the other delivers hammering force. It's like a tiny impact driver, smashing and twisting through soil and rock with every pulse. Where traditional rigs rely on sheer weight and torque, Grabowski relies on rhythm and precision. Its size is a limitation, but also its genius. Without the need for surface-mounted machinery, the Borobot drills silently beneath your feet, inch by inch. No operator is standing by. It's fully autonomous. Once deployed, it drills without supervision, dramatically reducing labor costs and human error. The design isn't about speed. It's about access. It trades brute force for intelligence. And because it's modular, affordable, and built with common materials, it could be scaled quickly if it proves itself in the dirt. Moving like an inchworm. Drilling is one thing. Moving while drilling is another. 
And when your drill lives inside the hole it's creating, you need to get creative. That's where Bohr Robotics Inchworm Motion comes in. It doesn't use wheels or tracks. It moves by gripping the earth itself. The trick lies in two inflatable devices called packers. Imagine a balloon inside the borehole. When filled with pressurized water, each packer expands outward, pushing against the borehole walls. That's how the robot anchors itself. One packer holds the drill in place while the other releases, letting the body extend downward. Then they switch roles, grip, release, pull, over and over, like a mechanical worm burrowing into the ground. It's oddly elegant. No surface equipment tugging cables. No long drive shafts. Just a closed system that climbs through rock by inflating, deflating, and shifting its weight. This method also makes the Borobot ideal for tight or obstructed spaces, places where large rigs would never fit. It works slowly but surely, making its way deeper with each cycle. And because it doesn't rely on constant external support, it can drill in places most rigs simply can't go. That alone could change everything. 3D Printing Underground Drilling into the earth isn't just about breaking rock. It's also about keeping the hole from collapsing. In loose or sandy soils, the sides of a borehole can cave in long before the system is finished. Traditional rigs solve this with metal casings or heavy drilling mud. But the Borobot has a different trick, one that sounds more like science fiction than engineering. It prints its support structure. As the drill descends, it carries a spool of plastic filament, similar to what you'd find in a 3D printer. When it detects loose material or unstable soil, it begins extruding a molten plastic lining, which hardens against the borehole walls as it moves. The result? A rigid, self-built tube that stabilizes the shaft in real time. It's an elegant solution to a problem that has plagued drillers for decades. No more lowering casing pieces by piece. No need for messy mud. The Borobot builds its tunnel as it descends, like a spider spinning silk behind it. And when the job's done, the drill head folds inward, making it easy to retract the entire unit back through the newly reinforced borehole. No mess, no leftover debris, no structural risk. The quiet flush. Rock chips and soil fragments pile up fast. If you don't clear them, the drill stalls. Traditional systems use compressed air or drilling mud. Borobot uses water, recycled, filtered, and quiet. Water flows down one pipe, wraps around the drill, picks up debris, and travels back up a return pipe. At the surface, a filter catches the solids. The water is reused. No noise, no heavy pumps, just a small sealed cycle. It keeps the drill cool, clears the path, and avoids a mess. And because it's closed loop, it minimizes waste and environmental disruption. It also means fewer moving parts outside the borehole. That reduces maintenance and risk, especially in places where equipment access is limited. Water is gentle on components and easy on filters. It's not high-tech, but it's smart. Quiet, clean, and automatic. That's the goal. And it's working. In tight neighborhoods where peace and precision matter, the Borobot's flushing system could be one of its biggest advantages. The limits of a tiny giant. No machine is perfect. The Borobot trades speed for simplicity. It can take up to two weeks to finish a single borehole. That's fine for a house, but less ideal at scale. Durability is another concern. Cramming motors and gears into a tiny frame means sacrificing some toughness. Testing is ongoing with granite and other hard materials, but it's still better suited for average soil types. Then there's the competition. Air source heat pumps are cheaper, faster to install, and don't need drilling. They're less efficient but more accessible. Borobot must prove that quiet, clean drilling is worth the effort and cost. Engineering challenges can be solved, but changing habits and economics? That's harder. Still, the signs are good. Borobot solves a real problem, one no one else has cracked in this way. And even its current limitations feel less like failures and more like the natural first steps of a big shift. From workshop to market. Since launching in 2023, Bohr Robotics has raised over $1.3 million. Not massive, but enough to push testing forward. At trade shows, industry leaders like Schneider Electric have taken notice. For now, the focus is narrow 
vertical geothermal, but plans are wider. The team hopes to add steering capabilities so the drill can avoid obstacles and expand viable sites. That alone could make a huge difference. Beyond geothermal, the company hints at other uses, tunnel repairs, horizontal drilling, foundation work, but they're staying grounded, perfecting what works before branching out. Testing continues with granite, durability improvements are underway, and pilot programs are expected by 2026. In a world chasing clean energy, geothermal is still vastly underused. If Borobot can deliver, it won't just drill, it will unlock a resource we've ignored for too long, quietly, steadily, from the ground up. This isn't just a drill, it's a new approach to energy, one that trades brute force for precision, noise for silence, and diesel for a standard wall socket. If the Borobot lives up to its promise, it could bring geothermal power to millions of homes that were once considered unreachable. No wrecked yards, no monstrous rigs, just a clever little machine doing what it was built to do, quietly, efficiently, persistently. The future of heating might not come from wind or sun, but from a whisper underground. And somewhere in Switzerland, a robot mole named Grabowski is already digging toward it.